We'll see. All right, guys, we can see that we have people joining us, but we're gonna take just a few minutes to allow you guys time to all get in and settled, and then we'll get started. Well, this is exciting. <laughs> hey, everybody. I was saying we're going to take a few minutes to give you guys time to all get in, and then we'll go ahead and get started with introductions. We're excited to have you guys here with us today. All right, I think we might be pausing. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. All right. So just for the sake of being prompt, um, we're going to go ahead and get started with introductions. We know we'll have some people who will jump in to join us, um, but we'll, we'll make sure we say hello throughout. Um, so guys, my name is Tish Kennedy. I'm one of the associate deans in the undergraduate admissions office at William & Mary. Um, and we were really excited to be able to create some programming for you guys, um, just to tell you a little bit more about us and to kind of get you acclimated to William & Mary. So um, I'm actually gonna get out of the way to allow the experts here to, to give you guys some information. Um, I will be in the Q&A box though. So um, as you have questions, feel free to just go ahead and add them in that Q&A. Um, we're going to make sure that we try and address everything that we possibly can. Um, whatever we don't get to, know that you can email us and we'll be able to get to those then too. Um, but what I'm going to do is disappear a little bit so that I can get to your questions and answers. Um, and then we're going to have the team to go ahead and introduce themselves and get started. Um, so again, thanks for joining us. We know you guys have a lot on your plates right now. Um, we really appreciate your time. And um, hopefully we can give you all the information that you need. Bye, guys. Well, not bye. I'm here. Well, good afternoon. I am Kimberly Weatherly. I'm the Assistant Dean and Director of the Center for Student Diversity. Welcome and thank you for Zooming in with us during this temporary new normal. I know everyone is navigating a unique time and we really appreciate you taking time to join us. The Center for Student Diversity, affectionately called the CSD, is a unit that is among the Division of Student Affairs. Uh, we strive to foster inclusion, collaboration, and relationship building within our campus community. We have a dynamic team who will now introduce themselves. I think you're on mute, Shanae. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Shanae Owens, and I am the Associate Director of the Center for Student Diversity. I look forward to interacting with you and answering some questions. You're on mute, Roxana. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Roxana Aguirre, and I serve as the Assistant Director for the Center of Student Diversity and I am proud to be the newest member of the CSD, and I look forward to engaging you all today and on campus very soon. And hello, friends. My name is Evan Gallagher. I'm the graduate assistant for the Center for Student Diversity, and we're so excited you're here today. So once again, all are welcome. A lot of times people hear Center for Student Diversity and if they feel that they don't fit either ethnicity or faith or an identity that they cannot attend events and come, I cannot stress enough that all are welcome. We provide support services for students for underserved and underrepresented populations, students of color, LGBTQ+, students with disabilities, students representing diverse faith and spiritual traditions. 
We engage all students in campus dialogue and discussions, and we offer a plethora of different workshops on diversity and inclusion. Our services include student advocacy, ways in which we provide this service are being a voice for students and helping to ensure that William & Mary is a place for all where all students can flourish. Discrimination and harassment response, we function as a listening and support system for students when issues of discrimination and harassment occur. In addition, we partner with the Dean of Students Office and the Office of Compliance when bias reports are received. Diversity education, the Center for Student Diversity offers workshops, discussions, and dialogues, and other experiences that build community through education. Some of those topics include breaking down barriers and challenging stereotypes, promoting opportunities for exchange and dialogue between individuals across diverse backgrounds, identities, and intersectionalities, encouraging learning about different people's cultures and global perspectives. We also provide funding. We serve as one of many funding sources for student organizations on campus and those student organizations who wish to partner with the CSD to create events that promote awareness diversity on diversity equity and inclusion are welcome to come and speak to us about potential opportunities leadership opportunities as students are a vital part of our team bringing their talent enthusiasm knowledge to the to key roles we work with we work to provide them leadership opportunities on campus. Some of those opportunities include being a student employee in our office, which as an, a student employee, you can help create events, uh, reach out in communications, provide outreach and program administration, which in turn helps students build transferable skills for future endeavors, support and guide incoming freshman students, such as yourselves, uh, as residential counselors in our PLUS program and educate new students through the written word by submitting to our fall orientation performance of One Tribe, Many Stories. So we have different programming. We are fun. I'm not sure if you can fully understand that through this video. We hope that you can. We like to dance. And if my colleagues don't loosen up a little bit, I'm gonna have us do a dance break in a few moments because we are a fun office. These are some of the programming that we have throughout the year, whether it's led by different students, whether it's led by us, or for our lecture series, we bring different speakers to campus to share about their life stories and how they impact our students. But most importantly, we listen to our students about what type of programs they would like to see on campus. So we're always open to collaborating with students, whether they work in the office, whether they are just hanging out in the center, or whether they just have an idea of this is something that I would like to see happen here at William & Mary. So we're always open to new ideas, but these are some of the programs that we have throughout the year in place now. So come hang out with us to have some fun. All right, so no matter what you're interested in, there's definitely ways for you to get involved once you're here on campus at William & Mary. We at the Center for Student Diversity have uh, over 30 different student organizations um, that just fall underneath our office. In the beginning of the fall semester, we're going to have a giant organization fair. So definitely be sure to mark that on your calendar, come out and see which areas that you feel like you wanna get involved with. Um, all of the students that are working in these student organizations are super passionate about these different areas and are like very excited for you to get on campus and get involved. Um, in this list, you might be seeing some things that you want to get involved with. But know that all of these organizations, while they might have uh, different missions, they are all still one big community under the Center for Student Diversity. Um, so each of these organizations are going to have different academic, professional, and social initiatives that they're going to put on throughout the year. Um, they can work underneath the Center for Student Diversity to uh, complete their mission, uh, make sure that they're creating a community for you as you're coming on campus. So if you want more information, definitely check out our website. Um, 
but definitely hit up the Center for Student Diversity Organization Fair once you're here on campus in the fall. Okay, is it time for the dance break or are we gonna save that for later? Now, later? Both? A little bit? A little something? What's hilarious, we're all on mute. <laughs> So probably we should save it for later and get through it. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. So now it's time for me to talk about my absolute favorite program on campus. It's the best program on campus because it's the program that I run. The PLUS pre-orientation program, PLUS stands for Preparing for Life as a University Student. It's a program that is for students that have been admitted to William & Mary have deposited and accepted that they are attending William & Mary in the fall. And what this program is, this year it will run July 11th through 18th. But as you know, we are in a time where nothing is certain. So that is what our plan is for right now, but things may change. So I do want to note that. But what this program entails, it's a way for students to get acclimated to campus prior to orientation. It involves mock classes, it involves workshops, it's led by myself as well as upperclassmen, William and Mary students. So you have that peer mentoring aspect. We um, normally take trips every evening as well as connecting with the Washington Center, so we take a trip up to DC, we connect with alum, we connect with the Williamsburg community. It's just a time for you to tone into that life in between high school and college. So as you see on the screen, the, the application will open up on May 1st and the deadline to apply, it is an application process, is May 25th by 5 p.m. I know there's a lot of things that are involved. It's a one week residential program, but it is completely free. All costs for the program is, are covered by the university. So you apply, there is an application in terms of we review. So not everyone is able to participate, but I do encourage you all to apply. I also want you all to stay connected with us. We have a very active social media where we post different events, whether it be our own or others, on Facebook as well as Instagram. You can reach us um, by phone, by email. We have updated our website to where we post our events there as well as different resources for students to make sure that you are connected both to the William, to William and Mary, to the CSD, and just the other things that college students would need. Um, I do want to note also, we may have gone through the presentation rather quickly, but um, the presentation will be available to you later as well, and we are here to answer any questions that you may have. So, dance break and questions. I think I see a question. All right, guys. So yeah, we have a question up now. Um, and I think this is actually a question that we should answer live. So what organizations are there for LGBT students? Right now, we have uh, two organizations, Rainbow Co Coalition and Lambda. Uh, they are very active. A matter of fact, tomorrow would have been Pride. But of course, because we're on a shelter in place, we aren't there, but we have year long uh, events and opportunities for LGBTQ students or any student to get involved as far as that case. Also in October is LGBTQ uh, month. We normally have a speaker. We have events that the CSD sponsors along with the different organizations sponsor events. Then come right now, April, we normally do pride because of course, June is the international month but we are not in session during June. 
So there's plenty of opportunities. And I'll take the privilege right now to say we also are proud of our transgender locker that we have. The Center for Student Diversity started the locker last summer and we were overwhelmed by the faculty and staff who donated items and apparel. The reason why we started that locker is because a lot of transgender students come and they definitely want to dress how they identify. And a lot of times it's very costly to switch over a wardrobe or a lot of times when you are trying clothes in a department store, you cannot go into the fitting room that you identify with. And sometimes it's a safety issue, so we're aware. So we want to make sure we give opportunities to our students to be the best student they can and excel at William & Mary. So those are some of the things that we do have and offer. Okay, um, we have some questions about um, the Asian American community on campus. So. Um, one student asked, what is the Asian American community on campus like? Another student asked if there were any specific organizations available for Chinese students. Yes, so um, there is a specific major in terms of APIA, um, Asia Pacific Islander American um, major that is available also as a minor. Um, as far as student organization, one of the most active ones um, is the Asian American Student Initiative as well as the Chinese Student Association. There are about two or three specific to Chinese students, but the um, Asian American Student Initiative is one of the larger organizations on campus that um, is very active on campus, whether um, they have an active um, Facebook page. I definitely would encourage you to check that out because they, they share a lot of articles, um, they're very social justice oriented, and um, just have a great presence on campus. Um, this year we were working on a cultural celebration um, for graduation. This would have been the first year. So we are, so it's not that we're not having it, but with um, um, a change in the, um, the commencement schedule, it's just been postponed. But definitely, it's, it's a great community on campus, both um, Asian American as well as our international students. Um, I also forgot, uh, we hosted our Lavender graduation. This would have been, well, this will be because it's postponed, our third year. And we have a ceremonial races uh, commencement celebration, which is for Latinx students. And then there's Dining of the Kente. That does not fall under our umbrella of CSD. But Dining of the Kente has been going on for about 15 years. And it's something we're very active with also for African-American students. And you can participate in all of those celebrations, as many as you identify with. I'm looking through at some of the questions. And there was thing, someone wanted a clarifying question in terms of if there's a difference between Lambda and Rainbow Coalition. And um, one of the biggest difference is um, one is more programming and one is, um, so just in terms of what their focus is, um, some, some will focus more on different social justice, some may be more um, programming. Rainbow Coalition is more the programming board of Lambda Alliance, so it's, it's, they just separate it in terms of what their focus is, but they work together and collaborate on many events. Um, Shanae, they were asking how many students are admitted to the PLUS program? Typically for the PLUS program, it's, it's a smaller cohort, so it's about 40 students um, because it's a residential program that allows them to have a time to um, connect together and build um, their own community. So typically it's about 40 students admitted. Um, I think that we have something on here that's specific to Caribbean students as well. Um, asking about the Caribbean student population, I think also just uh, student groups, that sort of thing. Okay, um, so the student organization that was specific to Caribbean students, they haven't been active in the last maybe three years, but um, they, they definitely, um, the students have found community in other organizations. So it's not where you don't have to meet the identity of an organization in order to join it but there was an organization specific to um to caribbean students and it just is not active at the moment but in terms of you can um, students have found a space within the african cultural society within the africana house and um so it people find a space everywhere 
I see that someone's asking about our organizations for Latinx students. We have LASU, which is the Latin American Student uh, Union, and we also have Undocu Tribe. All right. Um, it looks like they're saying, just to stick with PLUS so we can get those PLUS questions all answered, what other opportunities are there for people who are not admitted to the PLUS program? So for all the students who actually apply for the PLUS program, I also, whether you are accepted or not, we try to make sure that you are still connected with the CSD. So for those who um, we typically, um, with all the applicants, they still are, are previous to the different resources that are available. But what I've been doing for first year students, I've started doing a, a, a plus year long. With the plus year long program, it's been monthly workshops for first year students. So although it's called plus year long, it's for first year students in general. So it's like, for, hey, for a plus student, bring a friend. So that those workshops that are geared towards the plus students are also for any first year student who would like to come and take part of those resources. So though you may not be part of the PLUS cohort in the summer, there are opportunities throughout the year for you to have study sessions. We, have, um, we had a chat and shoot session um, recently with upperclassmen, just talk about their experiences. We had a study session where students were able to write in, these are the classes that I'm having difficulty in and within the time that they wrote in and the time that we had the actual session, we were able to bring in upperclassmen who are quote unquote experts in that field and able to work with the um, first year students on that. So we're definitely being more intentional about meeting the needs of the students who are not participating in PLUS, but could still meet the needs of those students. It also looks like we have some specific questions about Latinx students on campus. Um, just kind of representation, as well as um, I guess we could probably get into organizations that are active and things along those lines. Well, as far as Latinx students, uh, there's probably between 500 to 700 students on campus, which is a pretty good amount. All of our uh, diverse populations and identity populations are very close knit. Uh, Evan touched on it a few minutes ago about the different organizations. There's about over 400 organizations on campus, period. That's encompassing everyone. Just under the President's Council, there's about 60 multicultural orgs. So normally there's somebody, something for everyone. I think that was one of the questions. And I see, um, hi, I noticed the Latin community, is there any specific for Brazilians? Shanae Evan, right off the top of your head, do you know of any organizations? Not that it's specifically named for that population, but the Latin American um, Student Union um, it encompasses, you know, all representation within the Latin American culture. Mm -hmm. And guys, I also just share that um, I had a student, a couple of students actually reach out who were admitted this year. Um, like from Brazil who were asking to be connected with other students. Um, mm -hmm. We did that largely through our Reeves Center for International Studies. We did that that way in order just to connect students. So it's not, the, the population of students is certainly there and definitely represented within our Latinx uh, student organizations. So uh, most certainly students are able to make connections through those organizations. Absolutely. And one thing I'm just thinking, I guess I'll do an early commercial for one of our events. Um, we host the event our, um, during orientation, which is we do an organization fair and a showcase. So we do a showcase where some of the student organizations perform. And then afterwards we do a organization fair specific to diversity orgs. And that is a time where the student orgs are able to highlight their actual, um, their organization, the different um, events that they have coming up. But what I've noticed, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one connection versus when all 400 organizations are in Kaplan and they're um, trying to net connect, it, it can be a lot. But what I've noticed from, I remember one year, someone was asking, you know, how do I connect um, with the Ty Taiwanese um, Student Association? And you write down one name and then you connect it with another student. So it's just, it's a way for when people have that one-on-one -on -one connection 
or when you're able to connect one student to another, you can find like it may be, it may not be an organization specific to that population, but you can find how someone of that same um, cultural background was able to find community and connection within the org that they're a part of. Yes, I think this is actually a pretty good question just to start anyway. Um, one student, it looks like Joseph. Joseph said, would you say all diverse groups at William & Mary are represented equally, equally or disproportionately? And I actually think that's a really good question that goes into sort of the community at William & Mary and how our student groups sort of support one another. Um, I definitely have seen, I can say for me again, just outside, just kind of looking at events, that there are definitely events that there are definitely organizations that are larger than others. Um, but I think that the community, from what I can see, tends to support one another, even if that organization is not one that they formally belong to. Um, I don't know if you guys kind of have thoughts on what you see kind of facilitating that program um, day to day, um, but that's sort of what I tend to see from the outside looking in. I definitely would agree with that. And I think for an example, like the American Indian Associ um, Student Association, they're a small group. I think for the last four years that I've been here, um, their group has been between two to four members. But what they have been able to do is lean on other diversity focused organizations to partner with on their events so that they can bring their members to their events. They can help them advertise their events so that it's not just four people sitting in the room for a, an indigenous Thanksgiving. Rather, other people are bringing, or instead of hosting their meeting on that night, they're bringing their meeting to that event. So they definitely support one another. They advertise for one another and they give each other, we have this thing called President's Council. So the presidents of the different organizations meet about uh, two to three times per semester as a way to collaborate with one another to share ideas of what's working and what's not working in order to support one another, in order to grow and to recruit and retain, uh, retain members. Another uh, thing is also our student organizations vary depending on how active the students are because, of course, we are a minority population. So not everyone's going to always be active. Not everyone's always going to have the time. A lot of times you'll have students that they are active freshman, sophomore, junior year, and senior year. It's like, I have to get an internship. I just do not have time. I've given everything to this or I'm going to be a member, but I'm going to step down my role and pass the baton. So they fluctuate. They go up and down. Another point is if you, out of the 400 organizations and the 60 of them that are multicultural, if you do not see something that, you know, pertains to you, you can easily start an organization on campus. So they have an opportunity for you to say, hey, I have five to 10 other people who are interested, we found an advisor, and then you would fill out the paperwork to uh, possibly start a new organization. So it's, you're not locked down to what's in the student org book. Always feel free to start an organization if you don't see something that you identify with. Um, we have another question here that is, um, says, does the diversity center provide or connect students with counseling services for issues relating to discrimination? What happens, we have a counseling center, but a lot of times students come to us because they feel comfortable, because it is, a, you know, diversity nature or racism or whatnot. Not that we get a lot of those cases, but they do come. I'm very candid about who we are. We try very hard. We do a great job. We're not always perfect. No place is. So I'm being very honest. So a lot of times things will arise. Sometimes the center can handle it. If not, we will make sure we get you to the correct place. Normally either the dean of student, if you need counseling on anything, we will gladly contact a person or make sure that you get to the right people over in the counseling center. But we talk to a lot of students all the time about different issues that may occur on campus within their organizations, in the classroom. We also do workshops and dialogues because sometimes it's about you are working with students and faculty staff from all over the world. So everyone's culture is different and a lot of times people have not been exposed to other cultures. So we're very aware that sometimes it's a teachable moment and it's a learning opportunity. I think that leads right into, I'm going out of order here, but you were saying having been exposed to another culture. Um, so if someone wanted to learn and expose if someone wanted to learn and expose themselves to a certain ethnic culture, but that someone is not part of that culture, um, is that person allowed to join organizations or clubs related to that 
ethnic culture? Most definitely. And that's what we, I kicked off with that the center is welcome for everyone. All organizations are open to everyone. Uh, a while back, the, uh, one of the LGBTQ plus organizations, they had a person that identified as straight, but the person was an ally. So they happened to be the president. So you can come and learn, you can come partake, you can come be an officer, you can come and be a regular member of any organization on campus. Um, this one is pretty cut and dry. Uh, it's again about PLUS. They wanna know what the application process is like uh, for the PLUS program. If you enjoy watching me dance, you're in. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> the PLUS pro um, process, um, the application opens on May 1st. Um, fill out the application, which includes some short essays. Um, I encourage you to take it seriously. Um, the, cap the applications close on May 25th. Then there is a committee that reviews the application. Um, we want to make sure that students who are, we choose a cohort of students that we feel can benefit from the program. Um, we want to make sure that the program is for students who um, will take something from the program. So as far as the actual um, process itself is just a team of, um, it's a plus committee, which is comprised of CSD staff, admission staff, Dean of Student staff, and some um, staff member from academic enrichment just to review. It's not so much the GPA or any of the academic end of it. It's just looking at you as a person and what you write in your actual application. So we want to know you as a person. Hey guys, um, you guys have already all been admitted to William & Mary, so you've gone through a holistic review process, and I yes. this is an extension of that. Um, the PLUS application gives you just the opportunity to share even just a little bit more about yourself. So like every step of the way at William & Mary, what's going to happen is you're going to get asked questions, and then we're going to say, hold on, we want to know a little bit more. Hold on, we want to know a little bit more. Um, so every step, that's what we're trying to do, and, and PLUS is just kind of that next step where we're getting the opportunity to know a little bit more about you. And then the selection process is less about being like super, super highly selective, I would say, and more about, um, as Shanae was just saying, like once, first off, it's, it's limited in the space. So we have to go through a process of selecting students. But the ideas that the programming that they offer throughout the year, it's definitely gonna be able to be there to support those students either way. So just getting to know a little bit more about you so we can make that final kind of who's the, 40? You gonna give me 50 this year? Is it 40, 40? You yeah, know, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I will say we get a lot of support from the university from the PLUS program. So for this past year, we were able to get some funding from the parent and family programming. So they were able to support us in order for us to be able to do the year long programming and have the monthly workshops. So we definitely appreciate the support that we get from the university and we get from the parent and family um, programming that allows us to extend beyond the 40 in the summer and to do more work throughout the year. Um, we have a question about leadership. So how are the leadership opportunities, um, opportunity services like NCSD? So I guess kind of connecting students to leadership opportunities through your office. I guess that's the question if I'm asking it right or if somebody wants to give me a follow-up question and make sure that I ask that question appropriately? So I can answer according to how I understand the question. Um, so we have student workers in the office about four each year, I'm sorry, four to five each year, um, and they work in the capacity of office assistants, programming assistants, some of them manage our inside out theater, some of them in the capacity of running our social media and marketing, um, we also employ students in the summer for the PLUS programming um, as resident assistants. So we have about nine students in the summer. Um, leadership opportunities also come in the form of calling in our students as ambassadors. So that is usually a volunteer position, but it also we help to strengthen them in their leadership skills as a way of speaking on panels and representing the office in different ways. So there are different ways where leadership shows up on behalf of the office, but we're all constantly calling on our students to represent ourselves and an extension of our office. 
I think the last question that we have here right now is um, a really good question. Is, is William & Mary seeking to achieve a colorblind community or a community that acknowledges uh, the differences among their student body? I think it's a philosophy question, so. I think that is an awesome question. Uh, no, we are personally not um, seeking a colorblind community because that would mean that we think everyone is the same and we appreciate difference, we celebrate difference. Um, it's our diversity that makes us special. That's how we learn, that's how we grow. So if anything, we pursue just the opposite. We want, that's why we initiated the uh, graduation ceremonies because you have the huge graduation and then the smaller ones, they speak to your accomplishments. They allow all of your family, your professors, your friends to come celebrate you. There's a speaker that is speaking to the Latinx diaspora, the LGBTQ community, the African American, the APM, which is the Asian Pacific Asian American. So um, we appreciate all of that. So no, we are not trying to be colorblind. We respect, appreciate, love those differences. And we try to teach people to embrace and to learn. So we're very passionate about that. So it's an excellent question, but no, we are aware that we are diverse, but that's what makes us special. I think Roxana wanted to say something. I don't know, you were nodding or. <laughs> I think when, uh, speaking as one of the newest members of the CSD, I think I'll speak a little bit about my interview process. I think all of the people I met at faculty, staff, and students, that's one of the things that attracted me most to William and Mary. So the fact that they appreciate people's differences and they celebrate them and then all of the initiatives and what can you bring as um, not being native to Virginia or to William and Mary. So uh, I have a unique perspective in that I've only been in this position uh, 30 days. <laughs> so, uh, so I can speak from just the welcoming culture and to be able to say I'm my, a unique individual and we welcome you and we want you to show us who you are as a human being so that we can connect on that deeper level. We had another question that just popped into um, are there housing opportunities for non-binary gendered students? <laughs> we both pause. Yes, there is. It goes under our adaptive housing policy, which is under residential life. Um, and guys, again, we are, um, I guess I'm popping back in here too. Um, in, in kind of, I can see that our questions have slowed down. So I just want to try and end this by saying that for each of us who are here, um, if you guys maybe want to just share a little bit about sort of your 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 feelings kind of on um diversity at William and Mary. I know it's a big question, but I think we all kind of come at it come at it for different from different angles. Um, we can kind of go there and then we can we can let these people go if that's what they need to do. Uh, so I guess um I, I, I guess I can start in the sense that I'm sort of the beginning of that um, funnel of bringing students into um, into William and Mary, and I can say that from our admissions process, uh, one of the things that I've been very excited about. Uh, this is the second time I've worked here. I left William and Mary, and I came back. Um, and I um, I'm the director of all of our diversity initiatives out of the undergraduate admissions office. And um, I really appreciate the fact that when we say holistic review, we mean it, and it allows us the opportunity to really concentrate on building a diverse class. So it's not happenstance. It's not on accident. None of you guys were admitted on accident. Um, we read each student's application twice. We feel like we get to know you. I saw names in this box that I actually know and recognize from reading and reviewing your applications um, because we feel like the more we get to know you as people, the better we are at crafting a class that we could be excited about. So it's not just kind of throw it all out there and see what happens. It's really, we want this student to be here um, and we're small enough to be able to be that specific. Um, and so I do think that everything that we do is super purposeful and we want to hand over a class of students to these guys um, that are gonna be excited and dynamic and ready to go out into the larger William & Mary community and kind of showcase 
all that our diverse William & Mary community has. Um, so that's kind of how we look at what we're doing in the admissions office. I think I'm pretty much the next um, touch point as it relates to diversity with the PLUS pre-orientation program. And for me, I've loved the program because it allows students to build a community before they jump into classes. And what I love so much about the program, it's not so much about the schedule that is built, but it's more so the community that is built between the students within the program, but also with the upperclassmen giving back to the students. And that doesn't just happen in the PLUS program, that happens on campus as well. Within, within the diversity bubble of William and Mary, within the community, within the tribe of William and Mary, upperclassmen students are so will, willing to give back to the first year students based on trial and error, based on I did this wrong, so I don't want you to, or I did this right, so I want you to do this also. Um, I just love watching that happen. Um, not, I will be honest with the fact that not everyone feels that the CSD as a space itself is where they have to sit and go every day. It's a great space. It's a space where people go to eat lunch. It's a space where people um, study throughout the day. They may, uh, we have some evening hours, some nights where they can just be and just sit. But not everyone feels that that is their space. But there are some people that feel that that is the space that is home for them, away from home. So it's a way for you to find what works for you and what works for one person is not going to work for the next person. But what I have noticed is that if you give it a try, you find your community at William & Mary and you work it out. And there are different people in terms of what the CSD as an office staff represents because some people Kimberly is their go-to person. They're just like, I have to speak with Dr. Wesley. If she's not there that day, then, hey, Shanae, it's nice to see you, but I'm gonna come back when Dr. Wesley is here. And you just, you just find connections wherever you can. And that's just the beauty of William & Mary is that you just figure it out. I have to unmute. When we're in person, I do this thing where I ask everyone to hold up their hands. So I just want you to imagine that we're in an auditorium, a small auditorium, and I'm asking you those questions. And I ask students, how many of you were involved in student government in high school? How many were involved in athletics? Okay, I was involved in student government. How many people were uh, active in the band, majorettes, twirling, chess club? choir, some kind of performing choir, some kind of instrumental ensemble, all those different things. Well, it's the same. It's the same thing. A lot of times people get to college and they're like, oh, it's so rigorous, which it is. I have so much to do. I have so many things to study. But guess what? When you're active, which is a part of you being a diverse person, a diverse candidate, you are able to meet people like Shanae, Evan, Roxanne, and myself, Tish. We become your advisors as far as we're advising the organization you're in. Then we become your mentorship. Then who's gonna write you recommendations? Probably us for an internship, for grad school, for a job, for a different uh, job on campus or a different organization on campus. Uh, being active means that you get to polish off your interpersonal skills, your intrapersonal skills. You are able to lead, you're able to follow, you're able to learn so many leadership skills. So when it comes to diversity on campus, you have to diversify the organizations. So a lot of times people go to, which we want you to, the Black Student or the, the Latin uh, Association Student Union, uh, Rainbow Coalition, the uh, Chinese scholars, whatever it may be, is so many different, but they do not go to the other organizations. So you have an opportunity, and when we get here in the fall, when the world returns back to normal, you're going to meet orientation leaders, you're going to meet RAs. All of those people are leadership opportunities, and it's an opportunity for you to meet 
everyone and also diversify those organizations. If you've had an opportunity to visit campus before now, you probably met, uh, what do they call them? Your admission tour guides. All those places are open for you to diversify, for you to meet people, for you to give information and to give recommendations on, hey, this is something that students of color or students of identity said that they didn't see and we have it here. How better can we emphasize that or make that more visible? We need your input. So it's 6,000 students at William & Mary and we have about 400 student organizations and all these different opportunities. Once again, I always say college is only what you make it. So you have to be active and that's part of you being diverse as a student on campus and well-rounded, a holistic, and you have to go to different organizations and diversify them. We have a uh, organization called AMP. What is that? Amplified Productions? Alma Mater Productions, excuse me. Um, and, and they do all the programming and they have this huge budget. So if you want diverse events, it would behoove you to join AMP. And a lot of times people are saying that organizations aren't diverse. If you don't come forth and join, they won't be. So um, I've been with Women Mary, oh goodness, it'll be three years in August. Uh, Women Mary has been one of the most welcoming institutions I've ever worked. And like I tell people, I said, this is one of the few places where we walk the walk, just don't talk the talk. We believe in diversity. We believe in students excelling and everybody on the DOSO team, especially, we are invested in student success. And we're not perfect, no place is. UVA is not perfect, ODU, Harvard, Hampton, UCLA, wherever you go, but we try really, really hard. And I can honestly, honestly stand beside that, so. That, that's, that's my comment on that. See, now we're becoming more active and more animated. We are an animated group, so. I like to think that I'm perfect, but you know. <laughs> when you get to campus, Sinead is a card. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is her nonstop. <laughs> Evan, you, you're coming from um, uh, undergrad experience with James Madison, and now you're at Women Mary. Would you like to kind of talk about, you know, just, you know, the welcoming uh, background, the welcoming of William and Mary for you and the CSD office as I put you on the spot? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so you are about to enter such an amazing time in your lives. Um, there are going to be so many different new experiences, new people, um, new environments. Uh, and as Kimberly was saying, College is what you make it. Uh, you're going to get out what you put in. Um, when I started at JMU, I was um, generally a very shy person. I um, was dropped into this uh, big lake of new experiences. Um, and as my friends and colleagues can tell you, once I get more comfortable, um, my energy comes out. Um, but William and Mary was an incredibly welcoming environment to me. Um, so I showed up on my first day, I was greeted with um, friendly faces, both in the office and just around campus. I was walking around, it was a beautiful day out. People were walking around with smiles on their face, um, saying hello. And it's that type of community atmosphere that fills the campus. And then especially in the Center for Student Diversity. So you can use the office really however you need it. So it can be that catalyst for leadership and involvement. If you want to go there and get super involved, you are more than welcome to do that. But then also as what was said is if you need just a place to eat your lunch, you can do that too. Um, you get to decide what your path throughout college is. So choose carefully. And guys, just so you know, um, as we start to sort of round this out, I want to make sure you guys know this too before you start kind of heading out from the, the webinar. Um, there are a few other events that are directly geared towards diversity at William & Mary that are going to be happening throughout the month of April. Um, we're going to have uh, another webinar actually today at five on um, first generation college students. 
Um, we're going to have a mock lecture later in the month on April 20th. Um, that is a, um, this one, I'm sorry, is actually a research uh, one. So we have a program called William & Mary Shore that's about undergraduate research opportunities. Um, that's going to happen Monday, April 20th at 4 o'clock. Um, we're going to have a mock lecture by uh, Professor Rio Frio of our Latin American Studies program. Um, he's going to do a mock lecture about, um, I think he calls it social location, who we are and what we believe. So if you want to have an opportunity to sort of sit in on a class, um, Professor Rio Frio has said he's going to kind of provide a lecture for you guys. Um, and then we're going to do a student panel. And that's where you guys are going to get all the good insider information specifically from students. Um, and that's going to be on Friday, April 24th at 4 o'clock. All of these are on our website for sure. Um, but you can go and check them out again with all the rest of the digital DFAS stuff. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we had some programming out there that was specifically geared at answering the questions of our diverse students. Um, we know that these are questions that are very, very important to you finding out where you want to be and where you feel like you really belong when it comes time to decide where you're going to be for the next four years. Um, and we wanted to make sure we address those questions directly um, through the programming efforts that we were, we were attempting while we were social distancing. We wanted to make sure that we didn't lose that opportunity too. I just wanted to add one thing. Um, just please um, take heed to the contact information that we put out to you. If you feel the need to reach us out to us via our social media, you have our email address, um, and even if you want to have a conversation, I'm going to, I hate to say it for everyone, but I will. Uh, if you want to set up like a little Zoom call with us, if you have some more questions, we are willing to have a Zoom call and set to answer some questions a little further. So just reach out to us via email. We can set up a call and just have a chat um, to just dig a little deeper if you're interested. So you have the contact, feel free to, to, to reach out to us. Just remember, we are people, uh, people, uh, people, person. So um, if you walk down our hall in the campus center, our doors are always open. If you see us with a door closed, it means we are doing a report or budget or we are in with a student that has a private matter. So I'm glad Shanae brought that up. We are more than happy to interact with you. And Zoom for now is our new normal. So we are more than happy. Don't think you're bothering us or they don't want to Zoom. We are here to meet for you. William & Mary is open. So we are working every day. We're just doing it by Zoom. And that's why I was so glad when um, uh, Titch Kennedy, the uh, uh, out of admissions who's been narrating this was mentioning we're still having admitted student day. And that's because we feel you're important and you have a lot of questions to ask and you're excited about being a part of the tribe. So we are always here, but the institution is up and running. We just look a little different because of these times and we may look a little different during the summer and hopefully we'll see you in fall. And um, we make sure that we keep going. We were prepared. Um, one thing I'm proud about, our students happened to be on spring break at the time when everything really came out and the virus got going. and we told students, hey, stay, we want to be safe. And the governor made their his comments about, hey, we want to shelter in place. So guess what? We switched everything over in about a week and a half. So we were moving. So we made sure all students who were in the residence hall that they transitioned and that if they needed some type of help to get to the next place, because this was very abrupt and we understand that, that we helped them walk through the process. So um, those are all the things why I'm proud to work at William and Mary. You're on mute. All right, guys, I was going to say, if we had anything else, if anybody had anything else they needed to add, we could do that. Um, if we feel like we've gotten all of the information we have to give, we're, we're good to go. Um, I want to just say one more time, just echo what Shanae said. Um, we can't answer all of your questions in an hour um, in a Zoom presentation. And I also know that some of your questions are specific. Um, some of your questions might not even be yours, they might be your parents. Um, and if you, if those questions need to be answered, I just, I can't say enough um, how much we want to be able to be here for you guys. We know there's, just a, there's so many questions this year um, about kind of how to do this and how to navigate it. And one thing that hasn't changed is William & Mary is very, 
people centered. Um, and we've always prided ourselves on being accessible um, and we still are. So any questions that you guys have, I know again, Shanae said this um, with a lot more energy and enthusiasm, but uh, any questions that you guys have, email, email, email first so that we can set something up and then we can sit and talk to you or sit and talk to you and your parents. I'm happy to do that. Um, whatever we need to do to make sure that you get the questions answered because this is a really, really big decision. Um, and we just want to make sure you're making the right one for you. We, of course, feel like William & Mary is obviously the right decision, but um, well, you need to make the decision that works best for you and your family, too. All right. Are we good, team? Good to go? All right. Well, here's the what I became you know, what's the Zoom wave that everybody does when they get ready to say bye. Um, but thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Um, let us know what you think. Reach out to us. Um, go to some of the other programs. Go to the Digital DFAS website, and we'll look forward to seeing you at some of those. Bye, y'all.